Hello, everyone. This is uh, Manzoor Kadir, uh, Deputy Director at the United Nations University Institute for Water, Environment and Health. Today, I have the pleasure to host uh, this science talk in the absence of our regular host, uh, uh, Professor uh, Grace Ulovasaya. Uh, she is away for this week, and she will be back next week to, to continue hosting uh, uh, these science talks. Uh, today, I have the pleasure to introduce uh, the speaker, uh, Dr. Uh, Mir Mateen, uh, who is uh, a manager of uh, geospatial, climate, and infrastructure analytics and related work, which is being undertaken at uh, uh, UNU Inway. Uh, today, he will speak about uh, flood risk mapping for large river basins, particularly considering application of open access uh, satellite and uh, socioeconomic data. Over to you, Mati. Yeah, thank you, Manzur. Uh, and, uh, good morning, everyone. And, for, and thank you for joining this science talk. Yes, as Banjur said that my topic of this presentation would be how flood risk mapping for large river basin using open access and satellite and social economic data. So what the purpose of this uh, work is to develop a framework for assessing flood hazard, vulnerability, and risk at large river basin scale. Uh, so the, we did that uh, using Sentinel-1 SAR data accurately uh, map uh, like basin wise seamless flood inundation and identify areas in those basins who are more the area which are most frequently flooded and investigate how flood waters in the basin progress and then explore how open source data can be used to develop flood risk maps. Uh, as we know that uh, the main uh, problem with um, risk mapping is availability of open access uh, data for socioeconomic uh, and for especially for vulnerability and exposure. It is available for uh, small area or as a country level or but then when it comes to large river basin, so there are currently there are many global open access data are currently available, which we can take advantage of those to make those uh, flood risk maps. So our study area is the Ganges, Brahmaputra uh, and Meghna River Basin, which is a, in the South Asia is a very large river basin with 1.5 million square kilometer of area. It is a very complex in topography and mostly the monsoon is very intense with the, and then 80% of rainfall uh, mainly happens uh, during summer time. So that this is actually a combination is is a uh, combination of three basin. One is the Ganges basin uh, among them, the largest one where the flood happens the most. Uh, it has a around uh, 955 square kilometer with a approximately population of 740 million. The Ganges River originates from Himalaya and travels through Nepal, India, and Bangladesh and to the Bay of Bengal. Major sub basins are like Yamuna, Kagara on the upper uh, basin, and then uh, we have Koshi, Gandak, Buri Gandak, Mahalanda, the middle in the Indian part, and then uh, the Mohalanda and Padda in the Bangladesh area. <clears throat> then uh, Brahmaputra River Basin again is a big river, uh, originates from the Tibet uh, Angshi Glacier in the northern side of Himalaya in Tibet and traverses very long distance in the east and then coming back to the west uh, through Indian state of Assam uh, and then enter into Bangladesh and then meet with Kansas at in, and then finally end up with in the Bay of Bengal. Uh, uh, then uh, Meghna River Basin is, is 
is a smaller among the three basin, it's mainly northeast region of Bangladesh and India. Uh, is around 98,000 square kilometer and then formed by the confluence of two river basin river in the Shurma and Kushiara, and then it meets with the Meghna, uh, with the Ganges and Brahmaputra joint uh, uh, river, and then finally end up with, to the Bayabu. So the methodology we have we used is like we use Sentinel-1 data with DEM, and then some other global data set like uh, global floodplain extent, height of nearest drainage, global surface water, and then use all of them to process uh, time series flood extent, and then use that to, to develop, analyze flood hazard. Then we use uh, population exposed uh, like uh, cropland, GDP, and then generate flood exposure. Uh, and then also use the uh, like uh, poverty and population age dependency for vulnerability analysis and and then combine these three data data set to generate flood risk maps at the twenty. So there are various data set that we have used uh, that uh, in uh, like we as I mentioned we use Sentinel one SAR data elevation surface water height above nearest neighbor. Nearest drainage, uh, like global high resolution floodplain, hydro basin that we use for uh, as our an analytical units, uh, which is a very detailed uh, basin uh, boundary, attachment boundary for the globally available. So we use that as a unit of analysis and then we use land cover map, high resolution settlement layer. Relative wealth index and uh, like GDP for vulnerability analysis. So these are the example of the data that uh, some of the data set that we use. This is a digital elevation model from ELOS in 30 meter resolution. This is a relative wealth index uh, developed by Meta, uh, which is a 2.4 kilometer uh, grid graded. Uh, Relative wealth analysis uh, for yeah. available for whole world. Uh, so we use that data set for um, vulnerability analysis. Land cover also we use like global ESA 10 meter land cover uh, for identifying the crop area that that uh, are exposed to flood. Uh, as we see that we also use the Joint River Commission Global Surface Water Data available in Google Earth Engine. This is a height above nearest neighbor, uh, which uh, which uh, represent that for every pixel, every 30, it, is, it is in 30 meter, which are uh, the height of the pixel from the nearest uh, drainage, uh, like for example, it could be river or river channel. Uh, uh, the population is high resolution, high resolution settlement layer. It is also developed by Meta, uh, which is uh, a 30 meter resolution of population. Uh, so there are various uh, parameters of population, age group, uh, gender are distributed uh, in this data set we can, we can use. So all of these data are used for uh, in this study. Then the, for inundation mapping, we use uh, Sentinel-1 SAR data. Uh, so Sentinel-1 SAR data, uh, there are different um, like orbit, like ascending and descending orbit. There are different uh, uh, polarization. So based on uh, previous uh, studies, uh, we use the both ascending and descending order uh, orbit to increase the temporal and spatial resolution. Uh, and here we see the um, or orbit that uh, used uh, for this uh, study, especially covering all the floodplain area. So we use that floodplain uh, to reduce the amount of emails to process. So, so we, we did this analysis from 2017 to 2022. 
uh, for every to every 15 days uh, a, per extent. Uh, so for that, we had to process around 18,000 uh, satellite uh, image of Sentinel-1. Uh, we uh, so the methodology here we uh, is shown here for flood extent mapping. So the first we use the Sentinel one data and and the DEM in uh, use we use Google Earth engine. So the pre-processing at the pre-processing stage we did a few. The pre-processing that includes like uh, terrain slope correction, speckle filtering, and border noise removal uh, to, and then uh, processed image collection, develop a processed image collection for, for further analysis. So using that uh, pro processed, uh, pre-processed image, so we use automatic thresholding, uh, which uh, uh, use the Use the modified BMAX OTSU method is developed uh, introduced by Hell Market uh, in a paper in 2020, but we did some modification of that. So that uh, methodology includes that uh, for every um, image we generate a, a threshold, automatic threshold, but the, for threshold generation, uh, the grid or sample of pixels are the pixels are sampled from the uh, inundated area and then border of the inundated area so those uh, tiles are used and then generate a threshold that uh, define uh, water and non-water and then we use that to classify water extent for individual events so once we have uh, water and no water for individual emails, we then do the post-processing. In the post-processing, we mark the classified emails to create a water map for specific orbit, and then do a you know, noise removal for, uh, for that marked uh, water extent, and then use the, that extent for all the orbits to create a mosaic for the whole basin. And then this, Data are uploaded uh, in Google Earth Engine as a collection for further processing. Uh, so the whole process is automated uh, in we uh, using uh, Python script and Google Earth Engine uh, for generating the images and processing and then collect and then generating the mosaic. Uh, for uh, so for hazard analysis, we use that uh, like for every I I previously told that we have one image for every fifteen days for water inundation for the whole basin. So for hazard analysis, we then uh, use this water extent and then combine with uh, generate seasonal. Inundation, seasonal inundation are the inundated area which uh, every monsoon season, because this area is uh, the mainly flood happens in the flood plain. So many part of the basin are regularly inundated during the monsoon, which are not actually flood. And, and the people in this area are adapted to, to live with those kind of water. And then we also use uh, uh, permanent water and then combine the flood extent to the seasonal and permanent water to generate actual flooded water for each time state. And then we use that uh, for like annual maximum flooded water, then generate flood frequency, and then for um, then hazard severity based on the flood frequency. So which means that if the if a pixel or area flooded uh, more uh, which has higher hazard which is less than less hazard so based on the frequency we identify the hazard and then hazard index and for each catchment uh, we generate a hazard index based on the amount of area or amount of hazard area which is at different hazard severity so based on that to generate the hazard index uh, 
then uh, we also use those other as uh, socioeconomic data that I have uh, mentioned earlier to generate flood vulnerability index. So we use a high resolution settlement layer for population. Uh, and then from there, we get the population age dependency ratio, which means that if a, if in a catchment, uh, if there is more people who are dependent to, like for example, people age above uh, 60 and below five who are uh, prone to more vulnerable during the disaster and then who needs uh, help for from others to even uh, if there is need for evacuation or they need to be in the shelter so they, they might have different kinds of dependency in terms of their physical condition. So for use that to the, uh, make the age vulnerability and then we use a relative wealth index uh, to generate uh, wealth vulnerability, which means that if people are, if a people in a catchment is uh, poorer, would be more vulnerable than a catchment with uh, richer uh, people, uh, depending on the on the percent of people and their condition, economic status. So since this wealth index is, was generated. Uh, as a data set using uh, various kinds of uh, socioeconomic uh, like uh, parameters. So we use this as an indicator of uh, poverty. Uh, so kind of economic vulnerability. So we use this to vulnerability to, to generate a vulnerability index for each catchment. Uh, we also use this uh, exposure index. Uh, we we using the same data set one is uh, like for example we use the hazard severity index that we have earlier uh, hazard severity and then we use the land cover data and population data from high resolution settlement layer to generate exposure of uh, population gdp and cropland uh, to generate uh, so overlay this uh, hazard data with the uh, settlement and land cover data to get the exposure of people, exposure of GDP, and exposure of crop area for each catchment, and then generate an exposure index for each of the catchment. And then uh, finally, as uh, we shown in the previous um, methodology, here that we then use all these three exposure index uh, to generate the flood risk. So there are some results that uh, here we see that uh, water extent for every 15 days for all uh, six years, so which is a, we have a water extent for every 15 days, which ended up 144 uh, water extent. And this can be used for different kinds of as a data set for different types of analysis like uh, seasonality of water. So here's an example of uh, flood seasonality like in Ganges. Uh, if we uh, use uh, this data with a catchment boundary, you can see the area of uh, individual catchments or subbasins inundated. And then based on that, we can identify when flood occurs, mainly in, in different catchments. Like in Ganges, you can see the upper catchment, like uh, upper part of Ganges main river, like Yamuna and Gagara. So you can see that flood occurring around June. Uh, the peak, after flood occurs earlier, but the peak uh, we can see during uh, May or June, where the um, Lower catchment, like a middle part of Ganges, where uh, flood uh, started to taking on during uh, the same period to when the upper catchment or a little bit of lag, but then peak actually coming during uh, July, August, or or end of August. Same in the in the river in the middle part of the Ganges, uh, and then we can see the lower part the flooding occurring 
uh, the peak flood happening like August, September, during that time. In Bhaputra River Basin is uh, the flood uh, season mainly August and September and peak. Uh, uh, but in the Yamuna River, uh, there are there might be uh, flood season is more bigger, uh, might be more localized flood uh, contribute to the flood uh, in that uh, ridge area compared to like uh, upper region of um, the Bhopur River Basin. Same we see in Meghna Basin, there is a different, there are uh, flood can occur during um, April, May, and also in August, September. Uh, so the April, May, it might be uh, mainly flash flood, uh, local uh, due to high precipitation in upper uh, area or hilly area uh, around the Northeast of Meghalaya. So this kind of different analysis we can do using this data set, then we can also see that hazard of different uh, basin. So the area of flood hazard, uh, so analysis of this, uh, we can see that different catchments, uh, the amount of area which are highly hazard uh, or moderately or very high hazard. And we can also generate, we have also generated hazard maps uh, for the whole vessels uh, with the different CVI. Then uh, the, I can also show the risk map after we have those. Uh, this is a Kansas region. We can see the flood risk area, uh, which is uh, mainly with the Kansas and its tributaries around. Uh, uh, diff so we have this kind of uh, map generated, to which are like a high, uh, moderate, and high risk area. So this data set can be used for different types of uh, like risk mitigation planning uh, for flood management. We can we also have uh, the similar map. We can see that Bhopur River Basin where uh, we can see the major uh, flood risk area is in, in, in around the lower part of the Brahmaputra in Bangladesh in Jamuna River Basin, and also the catchments and base around the Brahmaputra Channel uh, in Assam. Uh, uh, on the Meghna Basin, you can see the in terms of percent of area is more risk area in, in mainly in the Shurma and Kushiara sub basin in, in Bangladesh and also in Meghna River Basin, uh, sub, sub basin, and uh, the part of the uh, area in Northeast India in the Borak uh, River Basin sub basin is also we have uh, risk, flood risk. So these are the general uh, analysis. We so we once we have done this, we can see that population at risk. Uh, here uh, we can see there are uh, a lot of uh, for each of the catchment. We can see how how much people are um, population are at risk, and then identify. So we can see the major flood risk is happening in, in, the, in the Ganges Basin is many of the Ganges sub basins are having uh, a population with a risk prone catchments. Uh, among them like Agara, Gomati, Yamuna, Ganges, Koshi, Gandok, and then the, that some of the Ganges main channels uh, are Having a large amount, amount number of people within, living in the high risk, uh, moderate to high risk zone. On the Bhopur River Basin, major sub basin, which are uh, having a large amount of people in high risk, uh, moderate to high risk uh, area, includes like Atrai, Karatwa, Tista, Jamuna, and Bhopur main basin. On the 
Hegner River Basin, we see more, all, mainly all among except Borak sub catchment or sub basin. Most of the river sub catchment or sub basin has a large amount of people compared to living in moderate to high risk. And then we use this data set to, to develop a web application for visualization of, uh, of the data and then giving the opportunity to analyze. And these data set are also available in Google Earth in the collection. Those who want uh, advanced analysis can use them. Uh, like here, uh, so you can use this uh, for seeing how on a map, how flood is progressing over time in different time of the year. Then uh, we can do some analysis of flood extent of time series. Like if we we can do that based on a, a selecting a catchment and then see uh, how flood uh, area. Or we can also see you know, what in terms of area or in terms of percent of area for that catchment. Uh, we can also draw a line. I can I will show a, a demo of the application. Uh, same like we can also do the exposure uh, and vulnerability analysis of uh, using that application. So now I will show uh, I will share uh, So here is the application that uh, we develop so for time series analysis like for example if we want to see water extent we can uh, between 19 uh, so 2017 to 2022 the analysis is currently available uh, so you can say for example we can see from january on So December 31, 2022, we can see the flood extent. And then uh, we can see the time slider. And then we can see the area that we see in the data. So we can focus this in, in, a, in a specific area to see how the inundation is over time. That's uh, one way we can explore the application you now in the web. Uh, it is it in the visualization app, focusing on the area of interest to see how flood uh, is progressing in that area. You can also like uh, draw a chart, like if we select a shape. And we can see show chart uh, by percent. You can see the area of inundation for that particular area of interest over time for that time, time series. Uh, this uh, can be also. So we can select as individual sub basin and then do the same analysis using this uh, sub basin or catchment of interest. So that's why this uh, application can be used to analyze the uh, flood uh, inundation in terms of 
by area of interest or catchment. Or so then also you know, for the you know, disk maps, we can also explore, we can select a subbasin. We can select the subbasin of interest. We can analyze the exposure, hazard, and vulnerability for or we can see the exposure map. Analyze those and we can also see all these parameters in, in a selected subbasin. Uh, so that's uh, mainly my mm, presentation. I am open to questions. Bonjour. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mateen. Uh, really appreciate. Uh, so, uh, the floor is open for discussion. Um, if there are questions, uh, um, the participants can share uh, these questions uh, through uh, chat uh, mode, and uh, I'll be actually happy to then read them out for Mateen to answer. Uh, Mateen, in the meantime, uh, we, we receive questions uh, in response to your uh, presentation. I'm interested to know the rationale for selecting these three uh, uh, basins, Magna, Brahmaputra, and the Ganges. Uh, uh, why were they, 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 they selected for this type of study? Do they really represent a very large area uh, or large river basins, other river basins, or they are, there are some other uh, dimensions? Uh, uh, which uh, the participants would also be interested to know. Yeah. No, uh, main purpose was to to see if we have uh, this globally available data set are good enough for generating a um, plot risk map for a large area. And then this basin combined uh, uh, like two of the largest river, uh, Ganges and Bhagavatra, and, uh, and then with Meghna, this represent, uh, I think, uh, one of the largest uh, river basin in the world. And also this is uh, one of the most uh, flood prone uh, region of the world. So that's why we selected this, but uh, since the methodology is developed and we have uh, many of the part is automated in spirit. So what we can now implement in any other river basin of this. So that's the idea that since we use the data set, which is, uh, which is uh, globally available, and, that's, and we wanted to see whether they are um, good enough to do that, so which means that now we can implement it to other river basin, so any of the river basin in the world. So which means if, uh, especially the, Mm, vulnerability and uh, exposure data are not uh, is a scarce in, in many of the part of the world. So and then, but these data are available for for whole whole the globe. So which means we can do the same thing for any river basin in the world. So that is a mm, demo demonstrating that the methodology is applicable. Uh, so. So what are the responses of uh, the governments uh, and the relevant stakeholders uh, like flood management authority, say for instance, in a, in a country or the government of a country uh, in response to these type of um, uh, studies because they are very valuable from uh, the science point of view. Uh, but I'm actually in interested to understand uh, uh, from the policy perspective, uh, how far they can go using the results of uh, these type of uh, studies into their national flood management planning. So that's where uh, I, I like to hear your response. Yeah, so I 
in in terms of individual uh, government or individual administrative area so this is so since this is a also that another aspect of this um, exercise is we have done it a, at a high resolution which means very small catchment level mm -hmm. so this can be used at different level of government uh, for identifying the area which are mostly most risk prone so during uh, so that can be used in different purpose one is during the uh, planning of mitigation or adaptation and then also prioritizing area during the disaster where the resource can be mobilized faster than than the other area and so that you can you can if there is a flood which are expecting because when you do flood response during forecast then you know that which area are risk prone. So during the forecast time, uh, uh, before the flood occurs, so you can do some work. So that work, so I'd understanding where is the most risk happens. So you can do some resource mobilization pre-flood based on the risk map. So that's the purpose of this uh, risk. And then um, this is a down at a river basin scale for which which also span across different countries. So that also help uh, like regional cooperation between the countries that to understand mm -hmm. that what are the flood risk area happen, is existing in different part of the basin, but in different part of different countries. So which also can be used for example uh to to do the dialogue of co cooperation or collaboration that is where to say for example uh, a country in a lower uh, riparian like a bangladesh uh, so they know that if uh, there are flood how happens in in india that eventually come to bangladesh so then which part of the India are also flood prone, and then we might need some data of those in terms of like uh, weather and uh, river data. So those kind of discussion can happen, and then uh, you can utilize them for bilateral collaboration and cooperation. And as a country level, uh, when uh, resources are allocated at different uh, like uh, local region, so. Mm, national planning can also incorporate that if a particular area is more area is risk prone or more poor people are living in the risk area so uh, then you can prioritize the resource allocation accordingly also yeah you you, you brought in a very interesting um, point uh, an element of uh, uh, not only the beneficial use of um, uh, these type of studies uh, by the governments, but uh, it also brings in um, the elements of uh, transboundary collaboration, uh, um, uh, not only in the water resources management, that may also help uh, in, in overall building the relationship and strengthening uh, collaboration in other areas, which, which may be directly or indirectly related to flood, flood water management. Uh, on another dimension, uh, you mentioned this 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 exercise has been done uh, on on a uh, on on a high resolution based data. So I was just wondering whether a similar type of uh, study can be used for cities uh, where uh, there are now now more commercial entities are becoming interested in having street level flood mapping. Uh, 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 updates, particularly the insurance companies and and uh, uh, those type of businesses uh, uh, would be more interested. So I'm interested to 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 know whether a similar type of exercise could be used for uh, uh, street level um, uh, flood mapping, or they it, it needs to be actually. Uh, redesigned in order to achieve that type of goal if if that is actually the case for the study uh, for cities because we have used uh, radar satellite data and uh, and then the the data that we have used is we haven't tested or it's not actually very successfully implemented 
for cities at street level flood mapping. Uh, so I think this is a very important uh, area of flood risk because current and recently cities are more affected by flooded water in terms of sewage. Uh, we we haven't tested it at that level or street level, so it is more on. Uh, it's not at street level, but is 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 better than doing some like country or sub region level. So it it can, you can say this is in between, uh, which means it is good for planning at a local level, but not at a street level. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mateen. These these are very valuable insights. Um, um, uh, building on your presentation. Uh, yeah, with no more questions from the audience, um, I'd like actually to, to close this uh, science talk by thanking you for your uh, very valuable uh, uh, insights into flood mapping and uh, uh, giving us um, a, an excellent presentation uh, on um, the, the study that uh, you are leading on uh, three major river basins. Uh, where uh, flooding is 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 quite intense and it happens um, quite frequently as well. Thank you so much, and um, I really appreciate all the audience uh, who participated uh, in in this science talk. And um, with this note, I'd like actually to close uh, this uh, science talk. Thank you very much, everyone. All the very best. Thank you, Manjit.